episode of Let's Talk Tobago. I'm Davia Chambers. We've got a treat for you today as we explore some of the entertainment hotspots in Tobago West to give you a taste of what this island has to offer as we approach the Easter weekend. Of course, we're also here with updates on the major stories happening right here in Tobago. This is an episode you do not want to miss, so stay with us for all the details, starting with this week's headlines. The Executive Council hosts its first Mandate Monday media briefing to account for all the work done over the last three months. The Chief Secretary's Bago T10 Blast Cricket Tournament returns with a bang. Bishops High School is in the spotlight as a former student is honored for earning a national scholarship. And later, we have highlights of the Taste of Tobago Golf Classic 2022. We'll bring you all these stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago returns. Stay with us. It's the return! The return! of the Chief Secretary's Bago T10 Blast from Saturday 9th April to Friday 15th April 2022 at Sid Gray Sporting Complex, Roxborough. Seven days of explosive cricket action like never seen before. That's one of the biggest hits in the tournament so far. Come see national players Imran Khan, Mark Dial, Jason Mohammed, Jit Gooley, Terence Hines, Carrie Pierre, Christopher Vincent, Tian Webster, and players from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. You don't want to miss out on the celebrity games on the final day, featuring West Indies stars just with the silver, Akil Hossain, Jaden Seals, and Stacey Ann King. Four franchises loaded with local, national, and regional stars will clash at 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. daily. Lots of nightly giveaways. Only $20 at the door. Get in the game with the Chief Secretary's Bago T10 Blast 2.0. This ad is powered by the Office of the Chief Secretary. It is hard to visit Mount Irvin Beach without stopping in at Anchor Bar and Grill. This spot gives you an authentic island lifestyle experience. From live performances to bonfires, there's never a dull moment here at Anchor Bar and Grill. A slice of paradise within paradise. Now we take a look at Mandate Monday. The name alone gives you a major clue as to what the Tobago House of Assembly's quarterly media briefings will be about, accounting to the public for the work being done in the public sector. The first Mandate Monday took place recently and we have highlights from some of the major achievements. Here's this story. From more than 100 engagements with interest groups, tourism stakeholders, members of the public and courtesy calls, to 475 tourism grants being approved for industry workers, to updates on two major hotel developments coming to Tobago East and West. These are just some of the accomplishments of the Division of Tourism, Culture, Antiquities and Transportation reported at the first installment of Mandate Monday. Through the efforts of our chief and the discussions he had with the prime minister, we were able to get our beaches successfully reopened in full. There was a beach cleanup co coordinator between the area rep, Mr. Joel Sampson, and the Pigeon Point Reef Association, and they cleaned up the Pigeon Point Beach and the Bonacord Lagoon. Through the efforts of the Division of Community Development, Youth Development and Sport, the Y zones across Tobago will be reopened soon. Repairs have begun and will be completed by April 30th. Meanwhile, Secretary of Settlements, Public Utilities and Rural Development, Assemblyman Ian Pollard, notes that $1.4 million has been distributed in home improvement grants. And alternative financing options have also been explored to improve the delivery of future housing developments. As for the island's education sector, the division undertook a strategic plan. The plan focuses on special education institutions, revolutionary systems and structures for research and scholarship distribution. These reflect the priority areas for human capital development. In keeping with contemporary global trends of planned change and transformational leadership, the division which I now fondly call the Tech is reviewing the vision, mission and goals that will improve services throughout the education sector. With respect to health, the Roxborough Hospital is now operational. Dialysis patients can be transferred to the hospital 
which is the first such facility in the East. We currently have outpatient services happening at the hospital, and that includes urology, renal clinics, OBGYN, PEDS, and internal medicine. The Division of Food Security, Natural Resources, the Environment, and Sustainable Development also listed its achievements. They include upgrades to the Scarborough Abattoir, repairs to Scarborough Market, renaming of the Castaro Fish Facility, and reintroduction of the capital of Paradise One after four years. Meanwhile, the Division of Infrastructure, Quarries, and Urban Development has also been busy. It's rehabilitated the Strip to Pigeon Point, launched its Show Me a Road Tobago Smart Initiative, and completed the design for coastal protection at Magdalena Grand Beach and Gulf Resort, as well as the village of Roxborough, among other accomplishments. Anchor Bar and Grill opens daily from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Or until you say stop. Now we go to the more serious side of paradise, as Chief Secretary Honorable Farley Augustine distributed mandate letters to all line secretaries at the Mandate Monday media briefing. The letters will guide THA divisions towards meeting their expected goals. Here's more in this story. At Mandate Monday, secretaries of the various Tobago House of Assembly divisions reported their progress over the past three months to the public. Chief Secretary Honorable Farley Augustine also distributed mandate letters to all line secretaries. The mandate letters detail goals and deliverables expected from each division and will guide the members in their execution. Each letter, while they start uh, in the same manner, will build out a list of goals and deliverables that we expect from each division. And uh, line secretaries and their assistant secretaries are uh, to follow these mandate letters closely and uh, to provide regular progress reports on the development of these mandate items. Honorable Augustine says the letters will be used to continue engagements with divisions in their preparations for the fiscal 2023 budget. I understand the challenges that occurred over the past three months. We're talking about new secretaries, uh, new to this level of public service, new to this interface with the public servants, new to the rules and regulations that apply to the public service. And, uh, you know, when you're new, you're sometimes full of zeal and zest, and you want to move quickly and you want to get things done quickly. And the truth is, sometimes the bureaucracy within the system does not always allow for that. So let me take this opportunity to beg of you, secretaries and assistant secretaries, that you should not lose your fire, should not lose your zeal um, in the face of the bureaucracy that you have to treat with. It is part of the system. Get clever, uh, get constructive, get creative. According to the chief secretary, all letters will be published. With the recent move to relax COVID-19 restrictions in Trinidad and Tobago, sport on the island is set to make a comeback. Starting, of course, with the second Chief Secretary's Bago T10 Blast Cricket Tournament. The competition is generating a lot of buzz in Tobago. Crystal George has the details. Thank you. With some health restrictions regarding COVID-19 being relaxed, sport is one arena set to see big benefits. The, the sporting the fraternity in Trinidad and Tobago is enjoying, the, enjoying the resumption of sporting activities the around the island, including the second chief secretary's Bego Titan Blast right here in Tobago. It's building up to be an exciting tournament. Chief Secretary Honorable Farley Augustine says events like the T10 Blast are important platforms for sport. This competition is important to the Tobago space because it provides a platform for our young people to showcase their talents. And as Tobagonians, we have long known that we have natural and raw talent here. But very often, we are not given the kind of platform that is required so that the world can see the talents that we have. And saying thank you, rather, to the former chief secretary who started this initiative. The four-team competition will feature players from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Trinidad, and of course, Tobago. It will further promote sport tourism on the island. The teams are... The Boko Reef Divers, 
the Rain Forest Rangers, Fort King George Gunners, and the Little Tobago Islanders. And those players consist 30 from Tobago, 14 from Trinidad, and four from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The tournament bowled off on Saturday 9th, April, and will run through to April 15th, with two matches daily. The final day will feature three matches, including a celebrity game. After the last ball is bowled, the winners will walk away with $20,000 TT, the beaten finalists will pocket $10,000, and the third place team, $5,000. There will also be awards for the man of the match, the most wickets, and the most valuable player of the tournament. The Chief Secretary's Bego Tite and Blast will be held at the Sid Gray Sporting Complex with the matches beginning at 5 p.m. daily. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. After four years of being out of service, the capital of Paradise fishing vessel is now seaworthy. What does this mean for Tobago? Stay with us to find out right on the other side of this break. Welcome back to Let's Talk Tobago. Now we are here at our final stop at Jade Cafe and Jade Monkey in the heart of Crown Point in the Southwest. It's a great location for those after work lines and weekend vibes. It's also popular with large groups with ideal space for dancing and karaoke nights. And now for the catch of the day, the capital of Paradise One. After four years off the seas, the boat is ready to sail once again. In our next story, Obadara Mills gives us the scoop about the potential benefits this commercial fishing vessel can bring to Tobago. Here's more. After four years on dry dock, the capital of Paradise won, Tobago's premier commercial fishing vessel is once again seaworthy. The vessel is owned by the Tobago House of Assembly. It was acquired to provide advanced training for local fishermen and to generate income and value-added products for the island. The fishing vessel capital of Paradise falls under the TATCO remit and today is actually a, a great day for Tobago because it signals the food security aspect of what we are trying to achieve. It signals that Tobago is poised for development in the agricultural sector, specifically the fishing sector at this point in time because this vessel has the potential to earn foreign exchange for Tobago and for the island of Trinidad and Tobago as well. It has the capacity of holding up, up to 10,000 pounds. Um, currently we're looking at tuna. I am in conversation with a couple buyers, both in Miami and Europe, in terms of buying that catch. It would definitely be a big win. This is a big win today for Tobago in terms of um, you know, the fishing industry. Um, well, I'm hopeful that the bycatch that we bring to Tobago can be used to give a value-added product in terms of fish, I mean the cornfish, the swordfish, the different types of fish that they have to offer. The capital of Paradise was built in Nova Scotia, Canada in 2009. Its crew of six includes the captain, as the vessel can sleep up to eight people. The vessel is equipped with an onboard ice machine, fish finder and radar systems, cameras to monitor the vessel and bait well. As of the tour, I would say it was a real experience. I mean, the, the boat is in good condition. It's sailing properly well. And I must say, it is a very, very great investment for Tobagoans. And I'm looking forward to see how this boat and how best we could invest in more because in order for the to fishing industry to survive, we need to invest more into this type of industry. The fishing vessel is the responsibility of the Division of Food Security, Natural Resources, the environment and sustainable development. It's being managed by the Tobago Agribusiness Development Company, TADCO. Chief Secretary Honorable Fali Augustine says he has confidence in TADCO's surrounding of the capital of paradise. Today, we can uh, promise you 
transparency going forward in terms of the operations of the Tobago of Paradise boat. The TATCO team will determine how uh, this boat will be utilized and the business model that uh, will go along with it, whether they will lease it out, whether they will hire staff. That's all in the hands of TATCO, that's why there is a board. Uh, they are competent professionals, uh, all uh, within the, the, the field of um, agriculture, generally speaking. And so we look forward to uh, the promise that this vessel will bring. The capital of Paradise One is expected to be back on the high seas this month. I'm Amadaro Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Former Bishops High School student Daniel Wilson is now a law student. He's also made Tobago very proud as a national scholarship winner. Recently, he was honored for his achievement. He has also shared his secret to success, as you'll hear from Crystal George in this next story. Have a look. With discipline and hard work, anyone can be successful. They're the qualities that earned Daniel Wilson a national scholarship. He's the loan recipient from Tobago in 2021. And for his achievement, Daniel was honored by the Division of Education, Research and Technology. Ceremonies like these not only highlight standout achievers, they also help motivate other young students to strive for excellence. We honor you, Daniel Wilson, a well-rounded youth who, outside of academic pursuits, is involved in both social and community activities. Daniel, in your undertakings, have demonstrated that with a dream and dedication, one is able to achieve their goals. I am particularly proud of the masterpiece that is Daniel Wilson. Daniel is a former student of Bishop's High School, Tobago. Bishop's principal, Sidney Ramnarine, says Daniel exemplified the mission of the school. She's also wishing him the very best in the years ahead. We are tremendously proud of the way Daniel has represented the mission of our school to develop well-rounded students. Daniel, you are moving ahead in your journey to achieving your dreams. May earning this scholarship propel you forward to greater and greater successes. Chief Secretary Honorable Fali Augustin says Daniel has earned this recognition. The Chief Secretary is also encouraging other students to follow his example. You deserve to be here. You deserve this treat this evening. You deserve to be celebrated. And this is a challenge for all of our students, all of you in sixth form, whether you're at Bishop's High School or at Signal Hill or Scarborough Secondary or a course in Goodwood, or in space, either, wherever you are in a, a sixth form program, I want to challenge you this evening. I want to say to you that you can be a scholarship winner too. Daniel is now a law student at the University of the West Indies Cafield campus in Barbados. He says his road to success was challenging and required dedication. I feel so proud to be Tobagonian. I feel so proud to make my division my Tobago House of Assembly and my school proud. I guess it's just finding that balance between your social work and your academic life and really being purposeful and intentional about everything that you want to achieve. That's how you, um, that's how you maximize your journey and make the best of it. The ceremony was held at the Fairways Restaurant and Golf Club at Tobago Plantations. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. As we continue to explore some of the island's most frequent hotspots, we're here at Happy Place in Canby. Now here is really a happy place, aimed at keeping the vibes flowing and bringing you entertainment to leave you with amazing memories. You can grab your meal to go or stay, dine in and have a great time. It's all your choice. They're open from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily and the owners, Donna Lee and Rene George, are ready to serve you. Now we're going to shift our attention to the Tobago Hospitality and Tourism Institute's Taste of Tobago Golf Classic 2022, an event that does exactly what its name says by marrying food and sport. The tournament provided tourism and hospitality students with a great opportunity to showcase their talents as the golfers also did on the course. We have some highlights in this story. They came, they saw, and they teed off for three days of golf, food, fun, 
and camaraderie at the 3rd Annual Tobago Hospitality and Tourism Institute THTI Taste of Tobago Golf Classic Tournament. First up on day one, the junior golfers showed their talent as the THTI partnered with Ricky Campbell Junior Golf Academy. Welcome to the um, third annual Taste of Tobago Golf Classic. And this year as part of the Golf Classic, we have teamed up with the Ricky Campbell Golf Academy. Um, so today we're having a, a, a golf clinic which involves uh, a, a three-hole competition and a drive, chip and putt competition. The academy is just about having fun and about teaching children the, the discipline of golf where they can enjoy the game and those who want to go on to play professionally can do that. We have an able body coach who is one of the pros in Tobago who is doing quite well and because of his passion and his drive we as parents and coaches we are here to support him. There is no better investment of time and money than in the life of a child. They are the future, Alma Powell. These words sum up the importance of a tournament like this in giving exposure to upcoming golfers. Assistant Secretary in the Division of Community Development, Youth Development and Sport, Wayne Clark says, where sport is being played in Tobago, his division is ready to support. He's also pleased with the involvement of the parents. Don't be afraid to call on us. We will support you because this this is something good and we are interested in supporting good things. Parents, give yourself a hand. And this is when you know something is going to be good. When the parents is involved and supporting the children. It's a win-win situation. Days two and three saw the adults test their game. The participants were also treated to a variety of culinary creations from the THTI chefs. The Taste of Tobago was also a fundraiser to support the running of the institution as well as new THTI projects. In the end, the team of David Sebastian and James Mathlin took home the top prize. The top Tobago team of Samuel Kent and Lorenzo Kent was second. Third was the duo of Terence Kalu and Hamid Ali. The classic was hosted at the Magdalena Grand Beach and Golf Resort at Tobago Plantations. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. In our final story, we talk about the importance of social inclusion as we bring you part two of the series, I Am Able, Just Differently. It's up next, right after this break, when Let's Talk Tobago returns. Stay with us. Welcome back to Let's Talk Tobago. Now, April is Autism Awareness Month. Autism is a condition that many people don't fully understand, but people living with autism can live truly fulfilling lives. In this episode of I Am Able, Just Differently, Omidara Mill spoke with Ria Paria, a parent of a child with autism. Have a look at what she shared about her experience. My name is Ria Paria and I have a wonderful son with autism and his name is Aiden. Aiden was around one and a half to two when I noticed okay he was still very quiet not saying much. The typical milestones, physical milestones of a child, you know baby to a toddler, they were there but the babbling and so on, you know the, the speech wasn't there as yet. By the time I got him into the developmental clinic at the hospital. It just took almost a year to get into the clinic. You know, um, that is when the diagnosis came. He was like almost three, three and a half. When the diagnosis came that he had autism. 
I had mixed feelings. I had relief, <laughs> meaning I knew what I had to deal with. That was one good thing. So I know, okay, it is this. So I could do reading. I can do um, research. I can find out. Um, and then you have that grief of not having, you know, the child you wish you had, <laughs> you know, to be able to have to think of, okay, well, how far would he reach? And then I, I stop myself. I say, you know what? Every month or every year, or every time he reaches something that he could not do before, I'll be happy. So just having that information was enough to help me to, to push on and to know how to help him. And like any parent who might be wondering what's going on with your child, you know, don't be in denial. Don't be sitting there and saying, well, something got changed, you know, he might grow out of it. You know, you just have a have a, a, a desire to know. Even if you have a little mm, of doubt in you that like something must be wrong, check it out. Because early intervention is very important. He has been at Happy Haven School since he was five. And, uh, you know, the, his teacher, a very hardworking teacher, and just the experiences of him being able to interact with his classmates and the uh, many different activities that she would try to get him in the early. He didn't want to hold a pen or a pencil, you know, to get him to hold a pen now, you know, to get him to want to touch glue at least for a little while. <laughs> You know, um, the strides that he have been making there and the hardworking teachers of Happy Haven School, you know, to be able to cope with him and to work with him. And a lot of extra work has gone in, you know, alongside what they have been doing at school. Since he was about five, he's been coming to Healing with Horses. It's called equine therapy where um, I look at him interacting with the horses and just bouncing in the trampoline. These are things that help to calm him down. Um, he really benefited from the interaction with the other children. And just to see him riding a horse, grooming a horse, and how he would be so comfortable and teaching him to, to balance and to be calm and to, to give the horse this huge creature instructions and to, you know and even hanging with Lennon he loves Lennon so much <laughs> at Veronica he just loves being here and all the years that he has been coming to here with horses I would I would always say that you know it was an experience that really really did a lot for him in his 14 now it's been a long time a long journey of learning and growing getting but more experiences that you know will help me to help him and he has come a long way because in the early he had a lot of tantrums because he couldn't speak the more he went to speech therapy the more he, he learned to communicate whether it was through sign or what we call pics or pictures you know he got calmer and that side of him you know he you know, got a little calmer because he was able to communicate better I was so happy that he broke out of that, you know, that little shell of just being all, always to himself. Persons with autism tend to be very reclusive sometimes because they're in their own world and then they're in, into their routines or you know, they have challenges, whether it's communication or socializing. So it was a big thing for me to, for him to be able to socialize and that was a, a big, you know, bring out the cake, bring out the balloons moment for me. to the end of yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago and as always we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like our Office of the Chief Secretary Facebook page. You can also follow us on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and productive week. Don't forget to check out any of the hotspots. And in that spirit, we leave you with a montage of the locations we visited today. Do enjoy.